Welcome to the Iron Table. I'm your host, Brian Godai, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Keith Jones. As iron sharpens iron, so should men sharpen men. We are here to enlighten, inspire, and relight that fire called self. So come on, pull up a chair, sit for a while, for truth is always on the menu. We now join the program already in progress. All right, welcome to the Iron Table, where iron sharpens iron, so should men sharpen men. Um, Today, we uh, have a special guest. Um, You've seen the other two before, Keith, Danny, but we brought a a brother from further up the East Coast. I remember it was um, Connecticut. I remember, I think the first time I met um, Eric had to have been like 95, 96 Pine Forge. Um, they came wow. up to Crate of Arts. Well, I mean, he was there. I probably remember all the women there because that's what we used to do at Pine Forge. We looked for the girls. No um, comment. Uh, well, you didn't have to look. I got a story about how one of those girls came up to you in New York. No comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, Wait, I don't know that story. I'll let a uh, main man, 100 grand, uh, Eric, introduce himself. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Eric Richardson, born and raised in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, happily married, going on 20 years, four Woo! beautiful years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, that gets a applause. <laughs> College yeah. sweetheart. Yes, sir. College yeah. sweetheart. Um, pleasure being with, uh, with these guys here. I can say I've known you, man, going on over 25 years now, at least. Gosh, yeah. Somebody, somebody in this group is old. Somebody. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm trying to hide this. Like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not old. Right, right. Wow, it's been that. Yeah. It has been that long. Yeah, it's been at least 25. Yeah, man, at least. It's been. It's been longer. Yeah. Yeah. Been long. yeah, 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 yeah. It's been longer. I don't want to put the exact year, but yeah, yeah. 27. Yeah. I'll say when I when I really met Eric, it was at uh, Oakwood College, now Oakwood mm-hmm. University, and right. um, he we're in the same class, and he had this group, this group called the Goodfellas. Goodfellas, yes sir, um, yes sir. I, I remember that group. Uh, interesting enough, my son's godfather, uh, Rob, is is a Goodfella, and I remember. Oh man, um, yeah, it, that's that's an interesting story. We can't oh, talk man. about that today, but yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. A, He's right a good ahead. godfather, you know. I I think he'll give Deuce class where I can't because I'm I'm straight <laughs> choir. But um, I remember uh, basketball intramurals. You know, yes, those fellas, yeah. they they gave it to us. They, yeah, yeah, that was they, a big rivalry back then. I remember that. Yeah, they they just said the yeah. we'll just check Bryant and we'll let the rest do what they need to do because <laughs> they know you weren't going to pass. Oh, well, I was going to pass. I did pass the ball. Inbounds is still considered a pass. Oh man! games, man. Hey, the oh, number one player doesn't have to pass; he chooses to. <laughs> remember that. But um, oh, I, I asked Eric uh, to to show up, and it's interesting. I saw him about what is it? Two weeks ago, or was it last week? No, it was two weeks. It was two weeks ago. Okay, two weeks yeah, ago. Two weeks ago. Um, yes, our yes, sons were in a in an interesting Bible bowl. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it took a long time, but the most interesting thing from it was uh, there was a prayer, and in the prayer, this lady said, "Lord, thank you for these unmolested children." Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and everyone just stopped. I mean, I looked around, my eyes opened. Yeah. yeah. But you think about it, we didn't have to make those prayers when we were in Pathfinders or Adventurers, but now you have to. Right, right. You know, and I was talking to my friend Rick. I was like, you know, do no, I need no, to go you back don't, in my you mind? You know? <laughs> no, you do. What? You do. It's, it's oh, different man. times now. It's different. Time. What what Wait, we went we through, they cannot go through. No. You got no. background checks. How many people got background checks? Do you know? <sighs> No, it's something to pray for, but I'm. We'll talk about it. I know yeah. we got we got another topic. We'll talk yeah. about it. We, we got another topic. You know, but... Yeah, that one was I, I almost let out a you know the audible gasp at that moment, but I had to hold it in. I had to hold it in. Yeah, man. 
and that that set the tone for the day there was some technical glitches it was just all types of stuff but that right there where you've got to now pray and thank god that these children have not been molested no that's that that part is sad but yeah but I mean, we'll talk like about to put it we'll in the prayer this. with the like, come on. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Moving okay. on. Moving on. But today, yeah. um, today's topic is uh, when was the last time you heard? And okay. I was thinking uh, this past weekend, I was in North Carolina and I was with some friends and we, I was fortunate to be a part of a, a podcast called Move the Crowd. And we were talking about just men and, you know, how we process things in love. And one of the questions, um, that I thought of, and I'm going to put it here at the bottom, is when was the last time you heard that you are enough? When was the last time that you heard that you're enough? And the context is, you know, as men, we were raised, or boys, we were told, you know, you provide, you protect, you do all this stuff. You got to get a house. You got to get a job. You got to do all Mm -hmm. this stuff. But never were we told that we were enough outside of those things so when was the last time you know that you heard that you in and of yourself were enough from a another person because i tell myself every day it's a part we all can't be like you (laughs) yeah no no no. but now let me give you the backstory the backstory Mm -hmm. to that the reason why i have to tell myself that every single day was because of a struggle of not having that as my reality and so i'm i'm taking into account the power of neuroplasticity and it's just like no 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 no. we're we're going to dig this trench of truth because this is what god says about me and i'm gonna hold on to this and everything else is alive from the pit of hell and so i tell myself every day sometimes multiple times a day i got these you know affirmations that I, i read and i'm i'm affirming myself and not mm-hmm. just myself, who what God said about me. Mm-hmm. And he says that I, I don't say that I'm enough. I say I'm more than enough. Mm-hmm. And, and I use the greater than sign. You know, it's just like, no, not equals. More than enough. There's only one me, baby. So are you <laughs> saying that you so you're saying that you you're the last person to tell you that you're enough. Was there anyone else that told you that you were enough? In those words, probably not in those words, but I, I probably had some affirming comments from some positive people in my life over the course of the last week. I try to surround myself with positive people, but it's it's rare to the point that I had to intentionally tell myself that you're going to say this every day until you actually start to believe it, until it starts to change your reality, because there was a struggle. When you go through stuff, when you go through life, when you when you experience you know the 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 rejection and 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 the um and people devaluing you know what it is that that you have and bring to the table you know it's it it really eats at the root and the core of that and yeah. so we have to uh take every thought captive and make it obedient to the truth of what God said. He said that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He said I'm more than a conqueror. He said that I am a mighty warrior and that he is with me and that I can do all things. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's who I am, baby. That's it. I like that. True. Mm-hmm. All right, Eric. So when's the last time you heard that you are enough? Not what you do, but that you at your core are enough. Honestly, I cannot remember in those words. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I could say the Danny route, like self talk, but um, I get I get affirmations like that um, from my wife, of course, from my children. Um, but in those exact words, no. But it's inferred and insinuated in other ways, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Jones. Yes, sir. Ah, man. Much like Danny, uh, it's it, it's something that it it takes now. Forty plus that you kind of look at the course of life and how 
you we are conditioned to always feel mm-hmm. less than we're, we're conditioned that way mm-hmm. so it's and then you you do get help from external sources work constantly um no matter how well you do on do at your job and how well you perform i i know there are supervisors that were going to tell you yeah and this and this their job because the company's all again company said you got to find something I, i'm a supervisor they'll tell me you got to find something that they're not doing well and we had a quarter where this guy was 10 for 10. he wasn't missing wow. but they, they still want me to find something <laughs> can you push back and say no there's nothing I mean, wrong with him so i went in there <laughs> your left shoelace is untied. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I had I gave him what they wanted and he laughed. Well, because he knew he knew he had he had the mindset that this quarter I'm going to walk as close to perfect as I can. But he did it to prove a point. I'm gonna do all of this hard work and, they still and they're still gonna, gonna tell me I'm not enough. Mm. They're still gonna tell me that mm. I'm not getting a raise because I didn't do enough. So he was also trying to prove a point. So mm-hmm. I knew what he was doing and I understood. So um and and at home, <laughs> like you say, there are ways that kids <laughs> when when everyone feels that they're getting what they want, the family can feel you're yeah. doing enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when 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 everybody's not getting what they want, whether it be time, energy, money, mm-hmm. or 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 tr- uh whatever it is that they're looking for, then again, no <sighs> It can leave you feeling like you're not doing enough or like you're not giving enough. So, no, you're not going to hear it. So it, it does come in that contact, like Danny said, that contact or that connection with God to remind you. I'm walking in purpose. I'm doing what God says do. And I'm more than enough. And I'm doing what I can the best that I can. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to always be what everybody wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not going to always feel like what you want. But <laughs> uh, we still walk in purpose. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I'll just chime in and say is it's almost certainly not going to be what other people want. And that's the whole oh, point. You yeah, know? That's true. Um, because uh, one of the last things I say to myself every day is I live to please God and to fulfill his purpose for me, not to please others, myself, or to fulfill somebody else's idea of a good life. And we, we have to tap into what it is that, um, that God said about us and really hone in on what he's called us to do because the world is going to just try to lead you astray is there's 359 wrong degrees on that protractor. There's only mm-hmm. one. There's only one mm-hmm. that, uh, should really count. Okay. So before you found God, because your, you know, your answer is definitely, I, I do believe, you know, that God definitely is our, um, for most of us at this table is, uh, he's our, our compass, you know, he kind of our litmus test to let us know how. We, but before then, did you feel that you were enough? If you take religion out of it, do you, like no, when, not absolutely not. No, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be straight, absolutely not. And that that can trace all the way back to the first first remembrances of it is, is grade school, you know. And you just I just carried that throughout most of my life. And, you know, even while I can go on a stage and do it, but like never really feeling as though I was enough. But that's gone. Them days gone. That dude dead. He like, did. I, I know who I am. He did and gone. Yeah. yeah. He, he did and gone. He, he, he gone. Did. But like the struggle is real, especially when you come from less than favorable situations and you're you you have um to 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 combat less than ideal relationships in formative years. All of that carries you, you carry you know, this weight of, okay, am I good enough now? Okay. Mm-hmm. Am, am I, you know, am I smart enough now? Am I tall enough? Am I strong enough now? And yo, out the box, we already had the sauce. But are you, are you asking someone that, or are you asking yourself? And if you aren't asking someone else that, why? What do you mean? Like, am I enough? Or like, who do you go to to ask that? Or it, are you just saying it, I'm just going to ask myself and ask God because, you know, my assumption is you don't want someone to tell you no or, you know, like why, why are men not asking that question? Just outright. Am I enough? Because I feel like most men, again, we're put in positions where at very little, if you played on a sport, if you played a sport and you 
you had a coach and you yeah. weren't doing what you were yeah. supposed to do, he let you know where you were slacking and that no, you don't start because you're not enough. You ain't got right. it. And 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 that's and that's not always a bad thing because that's helped a lot of us go back and work harder. Mm. Um, we get feedback, but then when we do reach a pinnacle, does I don't know if there is a pinnacle where there's a such thing is that where people are not going to come to you and say you need to improve. Um, there somebody yeah. will always, especially with social media, there's always because mm -hmm. there's a danger in searching for everybody's enough. And yeah. that's what the likes are. All these yeah. likes. Sometimes we're looking for everybody's you are enough through likes or through mm -hmm. through feedback. So when you start mm -hmm. looking for everybody to like or say you're enough, it it puts you in a place where you you are in harm's way. Um be, because it'll it'll never be good enough in the moment. We see with celebrities, <laughs> Will Smith, how easy it is to be everybody's favorite. He was enough at one point. Mm -hmm. And how 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 quickly and how hard he is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think too, you need to be careful about who you hear the are you enough from because yeah. you're from people that may not want you to elevate. So they're like, nah, man, if if I tell you that, Woo! if I tell you that, it's gonna boost you and excel at the level that I can't get on my own. So nah, you good. No, 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 you good, you good. Stay on this level playing field with me because if I boost you, that's going to give you the ammunition you need. But I want you to Man. stay down here with me because I don't have it to win it myself to get where you are. So you good. I'm going to tell you you enough. You got the, so, you got the offering plate? Nah. So that, 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 brings me, that brings me to my nah. next question. It's like, see, see, Eric is, Eric is there. So mm -hmm. when getting accolades, is it more important to get it from your parents as a child your circle in adolescence or when you're married your spouse d all the above exactly. yeah. All, yeah. All, all, all the above but you know one of the things i'm discovering is you know even i know we're not trying to over spiritualize this but you know when 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 it's mentioned about the greatest commandment you know love the lord with all that heart and then love thy neighbor as thyself the implication is that you've learned to love yourself and yeah. that there are certain things that you can't get from other people. Yes, we're social beings. Yes, we need, you know, those transformational mm -hmm. relationships in order to thrive, in order to, you know, blossom into the people God has called us to be. And God uses those, you know, um, those mm -hmm. people. But there's so many times in the Bible where, you know, those people were overlooked. You know, I'm thinking of David. You know who he's sitting there and the prophet samuel comes and he anoints he, he he's like asking god is, is this the guy here he's oh it's got to be him and was like mm -mm, rejected him well this one nope nope and then it gets to the point where the the prophet is just like is this it and his own <laughs> daddy is like oh my bad my bad uh, yeah this is one other. He just I got one more son. Right. 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 Yeah. You know, <laughs> this, this happens all through, you know, many great people's lives. And um, I think it's it's the reason why we have to have that good balance of of the right people, but even when even in the absence of the, those people, um, mm -hmm. we can hold on like an anchor. Yeah. To what we know God has said about us. And um, not to be cliche, but um, nothing else matters quite as much. And when you hold on to that, um, then no matter what, what situations you come out of and how dysfunctional, how much neglect or even abuse you face, mm -hmm. those things can be, um, instead of obstacles, they can be stepping stones leading you to even higher mm -hmm. heights. Yeah. Um, but I think it's very it goes without saying that we need to hear it more because we don't hear it enough, especially guys, especially men. That's true. That's and true. we're struggling out here when we're working hard, when we're doing our best, when we're, we're and we don't hear it, and it leads us into depression, it leads us to so many different dark places. And I I just love the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'd say for me, um, I mean, right now. You know, hearing from my wife that I'm enough is is critical because um, she's the one that gets um, gets that check 
you know, where most of between her and my son, uh, most of whatever I'm doing, you know, if I'm working hard, it's for the family. It's for, you know, the protection, for provisions, for stuff like that. Um, I would say growing up, I probably heard that I was enough more in uh, adolescence because I grew up in a home where it wasn't said, you know, I love you or, you know, it was like, you need to do this. You need to do this. You know, remember, you're looked at as a threat, not, you know, just a regular person. Um, and so it just, you know, you built up, build up that tough exterior to where it almost feels like you don't need someone to recognize you. But deep down inside, you want to be acknowledged. Um, and maybe that's better instead of hearing that I'm enough to acknowledge that in and of myself if you take away the money you take away the cars you take away the house you take away you just make me pull mm -hmm. that you know i'm enough now in dating i can't see that so all y'all that are dating you know don't don't go that far but when you're married you should be able to pull that card you know I, i've only got what coming on 11 years you know? yes. only Oh, yes, that's only that's good. That's great, man. Yeah. No, no, no. You can't. I mean, yes, clap for me because you know, yeah. good eye men. We're not used to mm -hmm. going past three. You know, three is a three is a is a blessing. But you know, one day I'm gonna catch up to to Eric. You know, twenty. You know, twenty plus. Come on, man. Come with it, man. Come with it. Come yeah, on. Man. Yes. After my my, y'all know my story. Mm -hmm. I don't care how long you've been married. How healthy is your relationship? Yeah, that's right. Like, that's right. because that's right. at the the drop of a dime, you know, I've seen decades go down the drain. And so you got, you have something special, but I think it goes without saying, like you pointed out, sometimes you're not hearing it when you need to. Mm -hmm. you're, you're putting in work, you know what I'm saying? And you're sacrificing and no one is really acknowledging you know those sacrifices that that's tough i mean have y'all been in that situation before talk to me well the theory is you i've heard i mean that's what you're supposed to be doing that's so so i'm not you know you're not gonna be acknowledged for for things you're supposed to be doing <laughs> and and like and, what are those things i'm supposed to be doing <laughs> I don't know. You gotta. Agree. I mean, I can just get a job. It says get a job. Didn't say a well-paying job. I can, mm -hmm. I can flip some burgers, right? Oh, okay, I guess I can't. Uh, no, I, I, well, no. I, I, if you if you go home and tell your wife tomorrow you go flip some burgers, is she not gonna like, be happy? Are we eating out tonight? <laughs> yeah, look out. Gonna, I'm quitting my good government job to go flip some burgers. She's not gonna take that too lightly. She still will love you, but she's right. not. She gonna be like, mm -hmm. you see this? You show an initiative, though. You show an initiative. <laughs> this All you gotta do, bro, is preface it with the Lord said. Right. The Lord said, "Thus saith the Lord." So let like, it be written. God will say, "Don't put that on me." <laughs> no, but no, real talk. Yes, I've I've heard a lot of. I've talked to a lot of guys who you know who have been made mm -hmm. to feel. That when they have uh, tried to go above and beyond, that it wasn't it wasn't good enough, and it's at a time where sometimes they just like you. I don't need a parade. I just need to need you to just recognize. Yeah. That, you know, I you know I appreciate you did X Y Z today, babe. And it goes both ways. I'm not saying, but yes. since we talk about what men need, I think a lot of times I don't know what it is. The same pride that keeps people from saying I'm sorry the same, is also connected to the same pride that will give that that positive reinforcement. Like I really appreciate how you how you love me, how you work with the kids, how you how you spend time with your family. Whatever it is that that she admires or appreciates, I do hear this a lot that I don't need her to do anything special per se, but we often hear when we're not doing it, but Come we don't on. hear enough when it's going well and we are doing it. We that positive reinforcement sometimes is missing. So um, it, it's something that couples lose along the way sometimes, but some people never learn it. We don't, some people don't know how to give that encouragement. Um, or we get rusty or, or we take it for mm -hmm. granted. Even ourselves, we take it for granted to say, babe, I, <laughs> I love when you lotion my feet. <laughs> you, whatever it is you love that she does. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, yeah. I know why she massages his scalp. And like, did you tell her that? No. Why not? Tell her. And I was like, because then sometimes you have to model the behavior that you want. Because then, 
in some cases she will reciprocate. She's like, well, I like, you know, when you sit and watch movies with, with me, I see these in, in couple sessions. And again, it's about learning how to connect and how to communicate. Um, but I do realize that a lot of people, we assume that women know how to be, this is my theory. Yeah. To get canceled. <laughs> women will often say they're better communicators. I don't feel that women are necessarily better communicators. Am I getting trouble for this one? I feel that they just have more words. Say it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna lean off the screen. Say so it. When they throw something, say, it. say it for the people in the back. <laughs> so, well, come on, Keith. <laughs> y'all, uh, y'all gonna make uh, me lose it. So, <laughs> no, 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 enough. Keep going. No, seriously, I, I feel that not, women are not necessarily better communicators. They typically have more words, and they can get them out quicker. <laughs> but what, re remind us, what's your profession again? <laughs> I'm a licensed <laughs> clinical social worker. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we and go. I see in sessions where, again, where sometimes there is their words coming out fast, furious, hot, and heavy. Um, and they're, they're cutting deep, and she doesn't realize it. So we think, in our minds as guys, that women often recognize the emotional and when somebody's hurting. Mm -hmm. they Not all the time. Um, especially when they themselves are hurting or they're angry. So um, while these words are coming out, they're damaging and he's shutting down and he's withdrawing. And then when she finally stops and say, well, did you hear what I said? And all he says is yes or yeah, whatever. It's hard for her to understand that those words that you just chose to use and the way you chose to go about it, it did not help that situation. It did right. not help you connect. And now there's gonna there, that damage is going to cause major repair. Um, so saying all that to say, both genders have to learn how to communicate Come on. because we, we speak different languages. Um, and, and what, and what works for one obviously doesn't always work for the other. For example, we're shorter. We like to get to the point. We come home, tell a story. I don't need to know what shade of blue she was wearing. I don't need to know the heel, the, the inch of the heels. I just need to know. So what she say to you, what you say back. How was it resolved? That's because mm -hmm. that's how we talk. What mm -hmm. happens? Oh, the the Lakers won. They did. Oh yeah, LeBron scored the last shot. That's the, that's the whole story. <laughs> you let a woman tell that same story. Oh, they came out to a theme song. Oh, I love that song. And then they were bouncing the ball around and people were doing layups. And she gonna give you the backstory about the coaches and what the, the suit. Like <laughs> she gonna go, she's gonna give you a full picture. And it's not that's not wrong. It's actually needed sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes when we're dealing with a situation, a problem, we need to be able to sit down and meet somewhere in the middle and learn to communicate where we're getting to the root of the issue um, and and understand and where there's under, mutual understanding. If that right. Makes sense. Right. Eric, what, what have you seen, Eric? Because, I mean, you, you, you also, you know, t talk to us profession wise. Come on, brother. What, 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 what have you seen? What have you experienced? We, we, we know you got you know some some very unique skill okay. sets there talk to us <laughs> well we know well let me just say this let me just say this before I, before I, before i go we we know we know the importance of not only what to say and how to say it but also when mm. timing timing um because you know there may be something you're going through or or a significant other and it's important but the timing may not be right especially if it's heated and emotional so it, it, the timing has to be, you know, on point. And um, being intentional, you know, we, we, you know, as men, there's a lot of stuff on our minds, you know, what we're going through. And so it's easy for us to um, stop and pause and be intentional. Like, man, let me check in on my man real quick. See how he's doing, being intentional, checking out. How you doing, man? Listen, you're awesome. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you really, uh, you know, you, you wanted me to pray for you. Let me be intentional. Let me not say I'm going to pray for you. Let me intentional pray for you right now. Right now. Let me do right right now. So I just want to leave three things that, like, men, we as men need. We need everybody, and I mentioned this into another men's group I was in. Every man needs a pourer, somebody that pours into them. Come on. Wisdom, intellect, you know, fills them up, um, you know, with so much um, just, 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 yeah, just, just wisdom and guidance, you know. Then you need somebody that's going to push you, push you into your excellence and push you into your greatness. You know, um, like even though there's, I don't feel like it, man. I don't feel like working. Out. Come on, man. You got this like a coach. Push. 
and then we need somebody that's like a puller. Like, you know, you you, you know, like, no, no, you better get out. Let me put you back in, brother. You better get in the trouble if you go in. Now, let me put you back out of that situation. Nah, let me, let me pull you out of that. And so those three things, man, and um, is what uh, every, every guy needs. Just And being intentional and being a pusher, pourer, and a puller. Mm, that's good. That's that real good, good, bro. Mm-hmm. See, this is why I brought him to the table. That's it. The table. I brought him to the table. <laughs> yeah, I pulled I've him been in. telling you for like two years. <laughs> hey man, it, it it took it took a mutual traumatic yes, experience for it us. To, I'm glad Bible, to Bible, Bible, I know y'all hated Bible Bowl, but I'm glad Bible Bowl has listen, man. Oh, Bible Bowl. listen, man. It brought us together. And we literally bumped out like when I walked outside to get some in the car. He said something to me. I even recognized. I was like, oh, what up, man? Right. I had to pull down my mask. <laughs> yeah, I said, oh, what up, man? But it was going to happen, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man. Happen, man. Well, Eric, uh, yeah. thank you. You know, you definitely yeah. have a, a seat at the at the table. Somebody Thanks might be table, asking, man. who's that smooth brother in the top oh, in the in the top right hand corner? And I'm about to say he married. Can he get that game? He married. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> just still focus on Danny. Danny, Danny can take it. Who's the man? Yeah, Danny's the man. Yep. Right Everybody right just point. Yep. Right They're all right pointing right different. Right yep, right Danny. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, we'll definitely bring you back in. But hey, man, man appreciate for... y'all, man. Love y'all, brothers, man. Keep pushing, keep pulling, and keep pouring, man. That's Much good. Thank you, sir. Thanks, uh, man. Good be. Oh. Well, now that Eric is gone, we can talk about what we really want to talk about. <laughs> he's still here. Oh, he's still there. Oh, okay. Well, his name will be up now. Oh, now he's gone. But um, Keith, you had mentioned uh, some things that men do that we do not get acknowledged for so so what are those things you know just let's just run off a list of things that that men would like to be acknowledged for is you know going to work you know i know that's something we're supposed to do but you know some some brothers may walk out the house and not go to work it might go somewhere else, you know, bringing home a check. What about, you know, opening the door or, or cooking a meal or, or, I mean, it, let's get a list of stuff. Y'all have been in this game for a long time, longer than me. So what is something that you, you might've done that you like, you know what, I, I needed some acknowledgement for that. A lot of men, they express their love language because that's how we're taught from early on in dating. Uh, what we do is acts of service. We like or give gifts because that's that's what we taught to do. We bring flowers, buy her lunch, do things. We so uh, whether that's her love language or not, that's what we will often do. So a lot of us will do. We'll start out doing things like that. Um, if if it is a healthy relationship where you are spending time with one another, learning each other, then it may shift and you may learn how to do other things like all the time and things to that nature. Uh, but those are some of the things that outside of paying, going to work and getting a paycheck that I know, like even for myself, my time. Uh, and and, and that the, the busier I become, the more guarded I become of my time. So when I am, and I know a lot of men who work a lot. So when you finally break away from the world to spend time and you don't feel that it's about you, it can cause resentment. It can cause frustration. You better believe it because it's like I push the world away so we can spend time together and all you want to do is argue. Mm. Um, I push the world away. Well, I'm holding back, you know, phone calls and things that's going on that I, I could be doing that I'm not, I'm choosing not to do because I want to spend time with you and you on your phone. Mm. So, so these are some of the things that I know a lot of men and uh, that, that they're frustrated with because it's, this is outside of work. This is, this is just something that I've intentionally tried to put together so that we can grow or we can bond or we can connect. And I don't feel like you appreciate it. Yeah. And I think it's easy to bash the, the, the women cause they're not here. Um, I, I've done my fair share of bashing, um, whether it's justified or not. I wouldn't call it bashing. It's not bashing, but I mean, we, we're, we're going to be, yeah, like if it's a room full of women, what you expect them to talk about? If it's a room full of men, what you expect? Like, like <laughs> this is not the space for equality. This is the space for us to have conversation and dialogue about 
real issues, how, you know, patterns of behavior and things that we see, ways that we feel so we can get to Absolutely. I make no generalization. Yeah. Of either, no. Of no, no, no. I, I love it. I We talk freely. And yeah, so yeah, I, mm -hmm. I just want to say that um, there's something that Keith said earlier. He was pointing out how, um, well, I'll just say this. Sometimes people withhold intentionally. So if if they know that you really need to hear that you're doing a good job, there's certain toxic personalities that will withhold that information just to man, torment you. Man, I could do a whole podcast on that by itself. The weaponization of, of, of needs, it's, it's real. This is why a lot of people don't express what they need and how, because at some point in their lives, whether it be a child or adult, it's, it's taken and it's used and dangled. And it, that's abusive. Yeah. That, 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 that's, it's hurtful and it, mm -hmm. it's abusive. So, um, it, it, I'm sorry, I'm shut up. Go ahead. Danny. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you took it when you need to take it, but I, I just wanted to point that out because, you know, some brothers out there who might be struggling you know, it's it's like it's important for us to have these conversations because yeah. like they're saying abuse is more than just putting a black eye on somebody. You know, it it's not limited to it's not gender specific. Sometimes it's the definition of sin is when you know the good that you could do and you could refuse be. to do it. You choose not like, to do it. Yes. Yeah. Like there's people who do that intentionally so that they can twist a knife and and cause who, whomever for whatever toxic reason to try to feel lower about themselves and it's it's wrong and it is abusive yes um, it, 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 it's a it's a sadistic satisfaction for those yeah. who do it intentionally and then some do it intentionally not well un, i won't say unintentionally it's it's sub, it's subliminal that's the word i'm looking yes for. some it, do it subliminal it's subtle, because it's subtle. It's i don't want hurt i don't, i'm not intentionally trying to hurt you but i don't want to see you happy either mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of these situations are important for us men to have safe space to be able to talk about, because I know so many men who who were hurting as a result of these situations and scenarios. And um, that's my son calling. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't put it on. Do not disturb. But the um, so many men, it's a common myth that men don't hurt, that men don't you know, um, feel pain, you know, they're, they're big, strong, muscular guys that I know who, um, are just shattered and who are, are, are searching for ways to find wholeness and healing. And I think this topic is, is really powerful to me because, um, you know, we, we've got to have the conversations and the dialogue about what our needs are and it's okay to have needs. It's okay to be around people who don't see us the way that we need, who are not affirming us. But what do we do then? Do we just stay there? Like, how do you handle these situations? You know, what what strategies do we employ to um, to not stay stuck there? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, well, I mean, the I guess the general thing is just to learn to live without, you know, and you know that's <laughs> not help, but that's not healthy. I'm gonna no. say that's not healthy. Yeah. Okay. No, you know, I, I, I just said generally that's what you do. You learn to live without it. I think that's know? what we've done. I think that's part of the problem. And what it does is it leaves a man open to when they get it, even if it's at a subtle, I mean like five percent. Listen, they gonna you... run and join whoever <laughs> gives them that little bit. I'm trying that's... to tell you, customer service called me one day, was like, Hello, how are you? And I was ready to propose. I was in love. <laughs> that lady was so nice to me, but she came at a time where my tank was so low mm -hmm. that the slightest compliment yeah. had me Been feeling there. like I was in love with this woman. Yeah. So, so what ways? I mean, what are some of the ways that men will they'll they will show that their tank is low, but they may not say it. I don't think that men. Most not most men know how to say it. Yeah, so I'm saying there, there has to be a tell. Well, they stop doing something. They mm. know, that could they be get snippy. 
that, mean, that could be, so, I, they're, they're, if I'll put it this way, if they're for a lot of guys, if, if we perceive, especially if we perceive as being done intentionally, then yes, there's going to be, there's most guys, there's some form of, there's a reaction. There's going to be some form of reaction. So if I, if I buy you flowers and I feel you don't appreciate the flowers, I'm going to stop buying flowers. Yeah. Um, if I compliment you because I really mean it and you shoot down my compliments every time, but you know, I notice how you react when everybody else compliments you. Cause you said, Oh, well you, my husband, you got to say that. Cause again, I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot. No, I don't have to. <laughs> well, in some people's minds and some couples minds, they feel like their significant other has to compliment them. So uh, for us as guys, when we say, Oh baby, you look nice. We're not saying it because like we, again, we want her to know. But a lot of times it's taken for granted. So what happens? I, yeah, she looks nice, but what's the point of telling her now? Because she's not going to listen to me. She, you know, it's very frustrating. And I hear this as a complaint. So yes, there is a reaction when this is the becomes the norm. Unfortunately, we got to figure out, <laughs> not figure out. A lot of couples need to go back to counseling or to re to refresh or reset. The communication meters in their in their marriage, like mm -hmm. his words do, his words should have some value. Her words mm -hmm. should have value when they speak, but for some reason, we started taking for granted, and uh, the and the value starts to uh, it starts to wane. Yeah, I think social media has also made it worse because you know the the chasing after likes, likes, loves, and and page views instead of you know like yeah. hey I told you this and well a hundred people told me this. I'm like, but yeah, a hundred people matter? will tell you they like you naked out on the screen. Yeah, I, mm, I was I, on one of these social media platforms out there. I didn't even know what how I ended up on the was Like, wait, what is mm -hmm. what is this? Oh, you knew how you ended up. <laughs> I, I, no, I didn't. I, I'll tell you the platform I, I was on TikTok because I'm I'm working on posting my stuff, and I I didn't know about the posting live your part. stuff. You, you mean your 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 media and stuff? I want to make sure because you said posting my stuff. Yes, so and that could be uh, the entrepreneurial. <laughs> Thank pursuits. you. Thank you. And Clean so, it up. <laughs> I, I try to make it a point to 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 comment and post on people who I'm connected with. I'm going through, and next thing you know, this is live video of this this little young girl, and I'm just like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Thanks for the likes, guys. Thanks for the ooh, thanks for the heart. Thank whatever whatever she was saying." And it was just like I was I was actually enamored for a second. It's like the people just walk walk around and just sit and like on both sides of the camera. Like this is just it was just so. It's hard to put words to it. It's not life. It's not living. It's <sighs> it's existing. It's people are. It, it's yeah. yeah. Remember, you used to want to go outside. Now they just want to go to where Wi Fi is. Yeah, and, and then just <laughs> thanks for the like, guys. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the likes. Oh, uh, thanks for the thanks for the thanks for the. And it's just like really. That's I remember it. back in the day when it was like AOL chat rooms and and Black Planet. You yeah. send a message, it would take about five five weeks before you get a picture, and it'd be all digitized. Now, you get stuff instantly. And it's great. And people are showing so much more than what they used to show back in the day. You get more likes for showing more. Yeah. I don't you get it's, the it's likes. A, it's, a simple, it's a simple science. So, so for mm -hmm. the iron table, I should go like this? No, please. Please don't. Okay. I mean, I thought we was going to get some more likes. No, it's not that kind of show. No. It, it's not. No, I'm glad no. you said that. <laughs> you trying to get us canceled. Yeah, we already been there. We Everyone's done. given one time a year to try to cancel us. All <laughs> right. You, you, you want to use yours already? We got a whole I year left. <laughs> I, I don't, but if I have to to get some <laughs> likes. <laughs> got to get the likes. But, wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> great, great conversation. Um, I, I was going to chime in on um, the fact that it's it's helpful to know that this is mental health, health, mental health awareness month when we're recording this, whenever you'll listen to this. But uh, it's, it's helpful to hear, Keith, that you're hearing men verbalize these things. Yeah. And I want to say, you know, Brian, that, you know, for those people who don't have those kind of people in their lives that to tell them, yo, sign, get, get an appointment. Um, that one of my favorite researchers, her name is Brene Brown, and um, she's all about people uh, sharing their uh, their the yucky parts of their story with those who she says have earned the right to know your story. 
And so whether or not that's fan, friends, fa- family, or family, now that I'm making up words. That's all right. I like you, and what do you say? I said I like that family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or somebody that you actually hire and pay. Somebody has earned the right to hear your story. We shouldn't be carrying that stuff alone. We 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 end up carrying that stuff for years and it affects all of our relationships with our spouses, with our kids, with our employers, employees, you know, and I just want to encourage everybody who might be watching if you're if you're experiencing that, you know, Keith is a therapist. Like we need to have at the bottom, his, you know, how you get. And, I, I and told him new aspirations. But, at, let's know. go. New aspirations. Y'all are you know, like get get you an appointment to talk to somebody who understands and who knows and who who can can lead you, lead and guide you to a better place. Because not everybody around you is going to um, to be a poorer. Not everybody around you is going to be a pusher. Not everybody around you is going to be a polar. Some people are just going to be toxic. Yes. And um, the, the ways to get healthy from those situations include finding, even if it's your, you paying somebody who's earned the right to know your story and lead you to a better place. Now, speaking of pouring, um, it, I have a great opportunity to pour into this young man. Uh, his name is uh, Maxwell Greider Moore. Um, and I know his mom, uh, Twyla, she and I went to uh, Pine Forge together and I saw an opportunity where our son was uh, designing shoes and he was designing shoes in order to get an opportunity to meet with a shoe designer, kind of learn. And I said, you know what? You know, I'm I'm blessed. You know, God has blessed me. Student loans are gone. So I had an opportunity to um, invest, to pour into this mm-hmm. young man. And I wanted to kind of show you guys, you know, these these shoes, you know, okay. shoes by Max Fresh. Let's and go. I'll put his information on the bottom. And, and y'all know y'all know my shoe story. You know, about a couple of weeks ago, I was playing basketball. My shoes were exploding. Um, tell you now, if you got shoes, wear them. Don't don't try to hold on to them. But uh, yeah, these are the shoes that I had him make for me. Okay, Maxwell, I see you. Yeah, these okay. are these are custom. I, I, might have, you know, this. I might have to give me a pair too. All well, right. if you want to get a pair, you got to go to um re- his Instagram. You know, I, I'm, okay. I'm an old guy, so you got to go to Instagram and and it's at Max underscore is underscore fresh. Okay. Those are kind of stuff, though. Oh yeah, these are good. Kid doing some some awesome things. I'm a, I'm oh yeah, this also awesome. got some texture to it. You gotta feel this. It feel like oh, velvet. What? It feel like velvet. <laughs> what is that velvet? Oh yeah, it's velvet. Oh, this is this is this is hot. You know, I'm I'm gonna have to find a, a good. What size shoe you wear? Uh, mine. I wear mine. It's, uh, that's what it's called. It's called mine. It, it's called mine. You know, like a thief in the night. You just gonna hear. <laughs> Boom! I got two of them. So you know, right. Max. You know, I when you. When your mom lets you listen to this, you know, young man, you you've done a phenomenal good job. job. Matt. Done good. You um, done very good, phenomenal boy. job, and and I hope that others who see this and even hear it uh, that they look for um, on Instagram at max m a x underscore is underscore fresh. Um, phenomenal young man, and I wish him nothing but success in his ventures. And you know, I think every every man should pour. Um, pour, pull, and push into you know this generation. You know, I, I think there was a saying that said it's it's easier to uh, what is it build up a child than to you know it's something about where it's easier to do it for a child than it is for a man. But I will say this: um, we can't forget fathers. We can't forget really trying to pour into them because they have a be- a better. Um, they can get to their sons a lot better than just some random guy. You know, for, for us, we, uh, some of us had our dads in our lives and, you know, may not have had them, but, you know, we had men that poured into us. Um, I remember Mr. Buchanan. I don't know if y'all, if y'all remember Mr. Buchanan, I, I got to go to a radio station because of him pouring into, you know, Mr. Craig, Mr. Peterson, you know, uh, you know, Dean Johnson, you know, he poured a lot and, no, some of us wouldn't be where we are today without, you know, God blessing us with some strong uh, male role models. So, you know, again, Max, phenomenal job. You know, wish you nothing but success. Those are my shoes. You know, 
They're my size. Oh, no. You know what? I'm gonna leave your shoes alone because I want to patronize little fella. Because I, I I know the, I know little Max, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get my own. But if you leave them on the floor, they mine. Oh no, I'm gonna put well, them on the other shoes. Yep. So you gonna see two lumps under my arm and my coat. Well, like that. Like you know, that. We've come to the end. Like that. Uh, what is wrong uh, with you? I don't know. I'm this sorry. this is this is why we can only do for a certain period of time. We can't go over an hour. It's past his bedtime. It's past his bedtime. He actually worked today. He actually yeah, worked right. today. I did. I I worked six days. Have I labored? Yeah, every day. day. No. Yep. Super, all right, gentlemen. Before we go, you know, I always ask y'all to give uh, one one statement, one sentence. Um. To kind of just encourage those who who may not know that someone cares. So we'll go clockwise. We'll start with Keith in order to keep him down to one sentence. One sentence. Oh, that's his sentence. All right, Danny, you're next. <laughs> hey, I'm just going to chime in and just say you are more than enough. You're not who others think that you are. Just remember that. So Keith, you really don't have anything to say. Oh, I'm done. You, you skipped him. You did the draw right. four. I thought you, I thought you skipped skip, and, and, skip, and, and reverse and, back and to me. Back to reverse. I, well, now I put a reverse. reverse. All right, reverse back to you. Yo, you are more. No, that is actually that's what I was going. To, you're more than enough. We need to hear that more. We need to say it more. We need to encourage ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to encourage the men around us. We need to encourage our sons. Mm -hmm. We need to do a better job of making that a normal uh, reality. To to not have everybody chasing the approval of their father because it's common. Yeah. Um, and and it's it's because he was never told he was enough. Mm -hmm. And so we can't give what we don't have. So we, we have the opportunity to find it. And that's more than a sentence. So I'm going to stop. I just can't keep it to one. I understand. <laughs> well, my closing words will be... Um, I'm so thankful. I'm thankful that I've got brothers that will uh, challenge, that will push, pull, and pour. And I look forward to sitting at this table with these gentlemen in the near future. Peace. Where's the last line? Well, that's it for the Iron Table today. We hope you enjoyed your meal. Don't worry about the bill. For truth is always free. Since you got a free meal, why don't you do something for us? Leave a tip. Tell your family and friends, for there's always room at the iron table. <laughs>